Shalom, shalom. Call all Yisrael on this beautiful Shabbat Eve. We do barak you all for listening um, on the vi by via of live stream. I'm Zakan Yaramia sitting here light, live on Shema Yisrael. And um, I do have a, a wonderful word for you all tonight. I know that I spoke on uh, Wednesday past concerning, um, um, concerning the message, and I said that I would talk about the vessel again on today as I did on last week, uh, the last time I was up, but uh, I'm going to change that, Israel. y'all. We're just going to continue on Loon, on Murmur from, uh, from Wednesday. Um, reason being, Israel, y'all, uh, because the time lapse is so great, I don't want to be switching from one message to an, uh, another message and not having a continual flow of the topic or whatever is laid on my left, so I do want to continue on that tonight. Uh, we do barack you all that are listening by via live stream. Again, you are joining with us. This is Shema Yisrael. Um, the phone number is 843-658-6222. Again, the phone number is 843-658-6222. And I do welcome you all tonight to call in um, with your testimonies or your uh, your questions or whatever you have on your left, your testimonies, Yisrael. For not only this broadcast, I'm here for a time, but it's also this time is for you, Israel. And uh, we do want you all to understand this, is that we uh, may communicate one with another, with the phone call, or even with, or, or with Torah. So I do want to continue where I left out on, on, on tonight, on last uh, Wednesday, Israel. Um, if you would, turn with me as I begin this broadcast. And uh, we had somewhat of a, not too, not too hard of a of, of a day today, Israel. But yet it, it was a little wearisome out there, uh, getting through the traffic, the hustling, the bustle. Um, you know, as on what they call the Friday evenings, they getting paid and trying to get home from work, so the traffic and stuff was somewhat um, tight in the area I was in, uh, in Marvin, North Carolina. Um, but I brought Yahweh for the opportunity to come before you tonight, Israel. I do told all of you for your support, for listening, for your comments, all that you do for us here at Test Your Community, do Barack you all. So um, let me somewhat backtrack and recap what I talked about on the last broadcast concerning Murmur. We were talking about how Israel, um, traversing through the land or through the wilderness, the Bidmar, and they went three days out of, um, I believe that was uh, Mizraim, hallelujah, and without water. And they murmured. They did more than just say that we were thirsty, that we need, uh, needed water, but they denied that Yahshu, that Almighty Yahweh could provide their needs. And they murmured against Moshe, which we know they were murmuring against Almighty Yahweh. And again, we find ourselves as a nation, as a people, individuals, we do that to the men of Yah. Those that Yahweh has placed um, and head or as a leader, as the Zarkane, as the Rayach, um, to lead um, Yisrael. Yah. And when things don't go as we think they should do, go, um, and we're, when, especially when we're not being led by the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh, we find ourselves complaining, and that's not to say that um, there's a lack and you pray for a lack or a need or you ask for Almighty Yahweh to move. But it's basically a mocking of Almighty Yahweh that he is not or he would not accomplish that what he said he would do. So um, let me t let us uh, turn to Shemoth Exodus chapter 20, chapter 15, verse 26. And again, I did read here and I somewhat stopped here as we moved on uh, to Ga Galatians chapter 5. And I do want to recap and read this over and we shall move on tonight. It says in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, if you would diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh your Almighty. We must diligently hearken, Yisrael. That's more than just um, doing something, but it's doing it with an effort and with uh, uh, tenacity. But we must diligently hearken or hear Shemach, the voice of Yahweh, your Almighty, and will do that which is right, which is Sadiq in his sight, 
It will give ear unto his commandments and keep all of his statutes. He said, I will put none of these Mahalia or these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh that heals you. I am your bomb. I am he that makes you complete. I am the one that cleans you. I'm the one that takes these diseases or these things from you, Israel. You know, Yahweh, he wants us to know or understand that more importantly, Israel. It's he that works the works in our lives. It's he that brings the refah or the healing to our bodies or to our mind and to our nephews, Israel. Verse 27. And they came to Elam where there was 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. And I did express to Israel, Yah, they wasn't too far of a journey from the place where Yahweh intended them to encamp by all the waters. See, we must understand, Israel, Yah, we're on a journey. And Yahweh, he intends to try us. He intends to... Um, if I may use the word work us, that he may prove us, Yisrael. Not that he may find out what's in us, but that we as a people will see or would see what dwells in our hearts, what really truly dwells in our minds, Yisrael. We speak so easily about what we can do, and what we're going to do for Almighty Yahweh, yet when the trials of the testing come, then we find ourselves faltering. We find ourselves faulty. So what Yahweh does, he brings certain, certain situations and circumstances. Why? That we may grow, that we may learn from them. Is it that he will not provide? No, he shall, he will provide. But he also suffers things for a time for our learning, Yisrael, that we may understand and that we may grow. Exodus chapter 16, verse 1, if you will move there with me. 16, verse 1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all called the congregation of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure out of the land of Mizraim, Egypt. And it says here that the whole congregation of the children of Israel, they murmured, they complained, they chatted, they chattered. Against Moshe and Aharon in the wilderness. Verse 3. And the children of Israel said to them, Would to be that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Mizraim. He said, At least then we sat by the Bashar of the flesh pots. And if you recall me talking about that, Yisrael, this is just simply saying that they rather had been persecuted or under the persecution in sin as long as they had their lentils or their flesh pots or their flesh was being satisfied and not their ruah. And they were rather that Yahweh took them or come upon them that they received death in that situation than what Yahweh had in, in store for them. See, what was the problem here, Israel? What is our problem many a times? When Yahweh is trying to prove us or show us something, Israel. Our problem many a times is that we are not led by the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, and we do not understand what he is doing, his purpose, his intentions, Israel. And his purpose and his, and his intentions always is to prove us that we may grow, that we may mature, so that we will be able to withstand the trials of temptations, whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whether it be the temptations of our, our trust or our confidence, our imuna and Almighty Yahweh and his works. He wants us to be confident in him, Yisrael, that he will work out all things and that he will work his tough pleasure in us, Yisrael. So they said that they'd rather be by their flesh pots. Now, now, if you be honest with yourself, Israel, there have been times where we look back because of what we endure now. We think that we were better off in the world, that we were better off 
um, in transgression or in sin under the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, then the position that we're in now, Yisrael, that is not true. That is the emotion of flesh and the deception of your own mind, not Satan deceiving, but the deception of your own mind and your own heart, because that is desperately, desperately wicked before Almighty Yahweh. Our heart, our mind, our perception, not being led by the Ruach or being led by the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Did not he do all to please Almighty Yahweh? Do we think he went through life without facing certain temptations and circumstances, Yisrael Yah? He faced everything that we have endured and everything that we face in our circumstances, Yisrael Yah. Yet, he went through them, and he showed us and he proved to us that they can be done without us sinning or counting Yahweh foolish that he cannot do what he has said he would do, Yisrael Yah. So, let us not desire the flesh pots or those things that we experienced in Mizraim. Because the purpose to be brought into this wide place and to the wilderness where Yisrael moved from out of Mizraim, out of Egypt, was to bring those things that has been set so deep in their heart, the things that they were used to, the ways of the Egyptians, the way that they served their pharaohs and their gods. Don't you know that those things were, um, were mixed into the camp? Even among the chosen of Almighty Yahweh? Hallelujah. Certainly they were, Yisrael. That is why it takes the wilderness, the, bit, the, the midbar, for those things to be taken out, to be purged out, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let me read this in Galusia, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And those of you that heard on the broadcast on Wednesday on Kodve Emet, um, I did read these very same Scriptures, And for those of you that, are, that have just tuned in, this is Zakan Yoram, y'all sitting here live on this Shabbat. Um, feel free to call in anytime. The phone number is 843-658-6222. Again, the phone number is 843-658-6222. And I do greet you all. I welcome you all. Do Barak Yahweh for you all tonight. Hallelujah. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Ruach. Did I not just talk about the Ruach? That we may understand, that we may hear the soft, gentle voice of the Ruach speaking unto us, Yisrael. Walk in the Ruach, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Were there lust of the flesh being fulfilled? In Yisrael, even in Mizraim, sure there was. Did not I just talk about the flesh pots? Those things that we are used to, those things that we desire and want to do, Yisrael, we have a call. Hallelujah. Shalom, Yabara, who's calling and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is uh, Josiah Ben Israel. I'm calling from Boise, Idaho. Shalom, my heart. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom. What, what do you have in your heart, your heart tonight, Ma? Uh, well, Israel. I just wanted to thank you all for your broadcast and your ministry, uh, particularly uh, uh, Dr. Dawi. Yes. Um, excuse me, Pastor Dawi. Um, if people don't know how precious your ministry really is, the only thing they need to do is just turn on the internet and see all the garbage out there. And the thing that I love about your pastor, and I know he hates to hear people say love. And because we're still trying to figure out what love is. But the thing that I really enjoy about his ministry is that it's the truth. And yes. that if it's not coming out of the Torah, then it's not coming out of his mouth. And that is a, a precious, precious gift that we have for men such as yourself and Pastor Dawi and some of the other brothers that I've heard yes. in the ministry. And uh, it's just a, a true blessing to be able to dial in in this last and evil days to hear truth because there's so much garbage out here, uh, particularly among the, the big Hebrew Israelite movement. And it's just, I'm, I'm just very blessed to be able to um, turn in and, and get some, some word that hallelujah. we need to have to strengthen us. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yes, I, that, that, that is a, it's a very true statement, um, my uh, there, there's, there is a bunch of garbage, there's a bunch of lies. 
uh, so many different doctrines that are out there that don't even line up with Torah. Um, you have men that they go by what they want and what they desire scripture to say so they can just continue um, in their lustful practices. And that's not what, what Yahweh desires in this hour. My, uh, he, he desires us to walk in Torah. Just as I was speaking concerning Yisrael and the flesh pots. You got so many people that want to still eat out of the flesh pots of Mizraim and not from the, the bread, the living bread and living water that Yahweh has to offer us through Yahshua HaMashiach, His Torah. Yeah, that's, um, that, is, that speaks volume because I actually contacted um, one of the pastors that I have been listening to for about 25 years and had addressed a couple of the issues, particularly the names in which um, is being used to supposedly, you know, bring glory to the Father. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him about those names, and I got a response from him. And it was the most erroneous um, bit of information that came from In Touch Ministries that was talking about how his name is Jehovah, mm -hmm. and that that was the sacred Hebrew name. And so I had also asked him about Christmas, and he responded with a, um, with a, a scripture, Jeremiah 33 and 3, and I asked them, well, pertaining to Christmas, did you bother to read Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, 1 through 6? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if you can get past that, I asked them a very simple question. I said, your name is Charles Stanley, or your pastor's name is Charles Stanley. And I said, do you have an international ministry? And they said, yes. And I said, well, when you go into a foreign country, do you address Dr. Stanley as a different name, or do you speak whatever language and then say the name Dr. Stanley? And they said, well... I can't say, and I was like, you can definitely say, because no matter where he goes, his name is always it Charles doesn't Stanley, change. whatever language is right. That's right. So why is it, why is it that we now change the Father's name to give glory to someone else? And I said, well, if I give you a million dollars and I say to you, the only thing I ever want you to do is remember that Josiah ben Israel gave you that money. If you go back and change my name to something else, then you've broken the word that you said you would give to, you know, that you would always remember the person who gave you that money. Right. And so when we have a precious thing like the Ruach Kadesh that's supposed to dwell in this earthen vessel, if we go and give credit to anything other than where we got that from, that's taking away from what actually gave us the, you know, gave us that gift. Yes, it's definitely, it definitely is. It's robbery. That's what it is. Right. It's, and, it's robbing. And so I asked them about Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. I mean, they actually sent me letters back saying why we are supposed to celebrate Christmas and Easter. And right. so I asked them, I was like, where do you get Easter in the Scripture? It's and not they, there. Right. And then the other thing is that they said um, it is easy to get out of the balance um, in our views denying children some pleasures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the response I got to him from a person who's supposed to be a doctorate in the ministry to say the reason why they celebrate Christmas, or we should, is because we're going to deny our kids some pleasure. Right, and 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 they they are doctrine, they are ministers, and 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 that and that aspect of of Christianity. That's what that is. It has nothing to do with Almighty Yama. Uh, has nothing right. to do with Almighty Yama. They're ministers unto Christianity, unto Satan. They're not ministers unto Almighty Yahweh. Because those, those things, see, the, anything that the world loves, we should know as a nation, if it's exalted amongst the world, then we should know it's not extinct in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. You have Christmas, uh, the Thanksgiving, all those pagan ho holidays, all, all those things my, uh, are, are not of Yah. And then people, they, they use that excuse, I have a, they use that excuse, um, Denying the children of pleasure. Well, actually, what that does, you're selling the, they're selling the children's soul uh, until, until a pagan act. And that's what they're doing. So, yeah, there are doctrines of their God, of their Jesus, of, of their Christmas. But we're, we're going to follow after Yahshua HaMashiach, my that's, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, hallelujah for that. That's what we're going to well, do, my Well, I won't, I won't take up any more of your time. I appreciate you taking the time to answer my call. Yes, sir. Uh, to, to thank you all for and, and keep up the, the, the wonderful work that you're doing because there's a lot of us Hebrews out here throughout the throughout the country. I mean, I, like I said, I'm in Idaho. I don't have anyone else to fellowship with that I know of. 
I'm here in Idaho. I've been in the truth for about two years. Mm-hmm. I've gone through all types of stuff. My wife has had two brain surgeries within the last month or so. Wow. And so it's just, you know, I just, I just yes. have really had a lot of time within the last year of trying to spend um, 15 hours a day in the Word and just getting, just now, I mean, really getting an understanding of the true blessing that we have in these last and evil days to have this truth revealed to us because... You know, our family has nothing to do with us, and I, I, I'm, I'm actually thankful for that, not from the fact that they don't have anything to do with us, but it must be something that's going on right, because before, it was all the fellowship, you know, let's get yes. together for Christmas, and now it's just the complete opposite. Yes. So I, I, I just, you know, I just thank you all for doing what you do. Please keep up the good work, and uh, uh, please keep us in your prayers that as long as we are walking before the Most High Yah, and trying to live in His perfect will, that He will uh, keep us and give us the strength to endure until the end. Yes, Hallelujah. And, and our prayers do go out to you, my out, you and your household. And just more than anything, I'll just just continue in in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Just continue in the Torah. And there's always there's always there's clear messages. Any questions that you have, there's there's messages. If you just listen to them. Uh, you will find a lot of your questions or anything that it will be answered just just on this on our website. Uh, there's just all uh, all sorts of messages, ti- um, titles, and topics. Um, just just uh, there, there's a little bit of everything there, my uh, so you know, uh, y- you can always go there. You can always go there and listen, and if you need something to give you strength and something to give you uh, encouragement and, and, and knowledge, also. Uh, so I, I appreciate you for calling. I, I told you for calling, and again, uh, our prayers do go out to you, your Ishal, your family, and uh, Yari Barak you, and sh- Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Bye, shalom, brother. All right, uh, very much. All right, yes, shalom. Hallelujah. Wasn't that a, a beautiful call, the Ruach of my art that called Yisrael? Uh, we must understand that even, you know, even though there's things that we know that happens um, in our lives and or in our households, and, you know, different ailments and things in the body, we must understand that this same very thing happens throughout all Yisrael. It happens throughout all Israel. So it's important that we as a people, as a nation, we continually stay in prayer, that Yahweh will lead us and guide us, not after our will, but that we seek his will in all things, that he may receive the honor and the power, hallelujah, for everything that he is doing, Israel. And again, we do appreciate that call from my uh, hallelujah way. Hallelujah. I'm the top of Ark Israel. My heart is moved very easily. And uh, I do understand there's just so much that's going on in this wicked nation, this wicked world, that unless we allow, and I say allow because we resist Almighty Yahweh and His Torah on so many levels, Israel. But unless we allow Him, His Mishra, to lead us, and that we follow it, with our whole heart, not partially, but with our whole heart, Israel, we cannot make it. And we cannot, we, 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 there's no way we can endure these things that are taking place uh, amongst this world. Uh, I heard just a little bit uh, on the news. Um, a lot of times I don't even turn on the radios in, in my, my vehicle um, if I know I'm going on broadcast, or I'm going to speak. I just turn it off so I can have a clear mind when I enter to the bay of Almighty Yahweh. But even the shootings uh, that has has happened, um, so many little children lost their lives, and some adults, this uh, crazed person just goes in into a school and just starts shooting all all of these people. It's just this takes place, and this is just an incident that we hear about in this nation, Israel. But it happens. It happens around the world. There's, there's uh, nations in, in, that don't even have the, if I may say, uh, the media that we have that we're able to hear the news. But th- this is not just a, a single incident. And this is not even the first, second, or third time that this has happened, if I believe, e- even this year. But Satan, he's, he's raging. He's warring. He knows that he has a short time, Israel. He's doing all that he can. Whether in the house, the body of Almighty Yahweh, or even on this world, Israel. Hallelujah. So it's important that we be led by the Ruach HaKodesh and not after the flesh, as I'm reading here in Galatians chapter 5. It says, 
in Galatians, as I continue, chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Ruach, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Ruach, and the Ruach against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would, or the things that you should, Yisrael. Verse 18. But if you be led by the Ruach, you are not under the Torah. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, stripes, seditions, heresies, verse 21, envyings, murders, there's a lot of murdering going on in Israel. Drunkenness, reveling, as such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they, does it say they? Who are the they? Which do such things. Am I reading this correct, Israel? Is that what it says in the latter part? Of Galatians, Gal Galusia, chapter 5, verse 21. They which do such things, what does it say? Shall not. It says, shall not. Not maybe. Not possibly. Not almost. But shall not inherit the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. So we can't walk after these things, Israel. We can't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's what the flesh parts in Mizraim, what, that's what that represent. For us to say, as the Kedushim said in here, that we would have rather been taken or died by the hand of Almighty Yahweh, sitting by our flesh pots or enjoying the pleasures of our lives, at least we were able to eat and drink to our full. Come on, Israel, y'all. Is that what we're telling Yahweh in this hour? That we was better off in sin? Hallelujah. That at least there, I could do this or I can do that. Not understanding the purpose of why Yahweh is doing what he's doing. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Talking about the fruits of the Ruach. I'm going to read 22 through 26 and then we're going to move on into Shemoth Exodus. But the fruit of the Ruach is a hava, a love. And my argument, it's not that we, he, he, Reach hates uh, the word, but it just simply, I, I'm, I know you understand, but this is for those that are listening. Um, the word love is used so much in so many instances, except the ahava of Almighty Yahweh. Having concern. People don't have concern one for another in this hour, in this day. And we have seen those and experienced those, even myself. They love, they love, they love, but yet they do not have the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh. So no, we don't mind an Ak expressing his Ahava, saying, I, I, I appreciate you, I Ahava you, I, I love you. But when you say that, Israel, it has to be for real. It has to be true and a truth. Hallelujah. And love can be expressed in more than just words, Israel. Action speaks much louder than words. If Yahweh just says that he love us, he love us, and never sent Yahshua HaMashiach, or never made a way for our sins to be cleansed, then where's the Ahava? If we're still destined for destruction, yet Yahweh has made a way. Yet he spoke, and yet there was action. So when we use those words, uh, we must make sure that there is action to back that up. Hallelujah. Oh, no, we, we, we don't mind. We love to hear Ark say, I have a, I have a you. If he's a true Ark or from a true Ark. The fruit of the Ruach is a Hava, joy, shalom, long suffering, gentleness, tough, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against there is no Torah. And what they're saying, there is no line that is drawn that you can only love or hover this much. You only can have a patient to this extent. No, there's, there's no Torah. There's nothing um, impeding that, Yisrael. 
And they that are in Yahshua Messiah have impelled the flesh. Don't you know that's what Yahweh was doing in the Midbar on this wide expanse, this wilderness, where there was no uh, cities, no settlements in the place that there was in Israel? They were brought there that they may impale, or if I may use this term, crucify, quote unquote, to kill the affections and the lusts of the flesh. See, it was the affection and the lust of the flesh that caused Israel or caused us to say we'd rather be about our flesh pots back in Mizraheem because we're out of our comfort zone. We should be out of our comfort zone, Yisraya. And they that are in Messiah, are we in Messiah tonight, Yisraya? Are you in Messiah, Yahshua? Yahshua HaMashiach, is he in you, Yisraya? Then, if that be so, if he is, if this is true, then we have impaled the flesh. That means the flesh doesn't have any rule. We don't allow uh, our emotions to lead us. We don't allow uh, uh, our fleshly desires and our impulses to lead us, Yisraya. With the affections, I just talked about the affections, and the lusts, not just the lust, but the lusts of the flesh, Yisraya. Verse 25. If we live in the Ruach, let us also walk in the Ruach. Verse 26. Let us not be desires of vain splendor, provoking one another, envying one another. So we should not do that, Yisrael. Those are These are the guidelines of the Ruach. Love, joy, shalom. Ahava, long-suffering, gentleness, being tough, faithfulness. One that could be counted on at all times, not some of the times. So we should be led by these things, Israel, and not by the lusts of the flesh. Moving on to Exodus, and again we're talking about murmuring, Israel. Talking about murmuring tonight. Hallelujah. It also had to, as it talks about in songs about the seven. Uh, voices of Almighty Yahweh. This is concerning the shaking in the wilderness. Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. Moving on. Then said Yahweh to Moshe, Behold, I will rain bread from the Shemayims for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate or a certain amount every day. Was that a statue? Was that a commandment? That was given, sure it is. That I may what? Prove them. This is another test. This is another trial to prove, to see where will the children of Israel at this time, if they will obey or not. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my Torah or not. See, we don't look at a lot of things that we go through, whether... It's, it, it's, it's by our ish or our isha, uh, a family member, even in the house of Yisrael, on our jobs, on our daily lives. A lot of things that happen to us, we forget that they are just trials. It's just a testing. Every moment of life, Yisrael, whether we want to receive or whether we think about it or not, it's a test and a trial. When you make your decisions, before you make a move, before you proceed, before you make your next step, it is a trial. We must look at it as so, Yisrael. That I may prove them in verse 4, whether they will walk in my Torah or not. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Why? So that there will be plenty for the Shabbat. They don't have to go out on the Shabbat and gather. And Moshe and Aharon said to the children of Israel at evening, Then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you forth out of the land of Mizraim. And in the morning, then shall you see the splendor of Yahweh. For that he hears your murmuring and your complaining against him. 
against Yahweh. And what are we? What are we, Israel? Who are you? What are we that we murmur? Or he says that we murmur, that, that they murmur against us. Who are we that we murmur against Yah? Who are we to murmur against those that Yahweh has placed to lead Israel, to guide us and to teach Israel? Who are we that we should murmur when they are telling us the truth? Do you hate us, Israel, because we tell you the truth? Do you murmur against us because we tell you the truth? And we stand on the truth, Israel. Verse 8. And Moshe, and Moshe said, This shall be when Yahweh shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. Did he say flesh or did he say bread? He said flesh here. Flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full. For that Yahweh, he hears your murmurings, which you murmur against him. Do we not think that Yahweh, he hears when we murmur? Whether we murmur against our ah, whether we murmur against our ho, our ish, or our isha, do we not think that Yahweh hears us? We murmur against him when we complain. Sure, he hears that, Israel. What are we? He said, your murmurings, are not against us. Moshe and Haran, they're making it straight. Listen, Israel, your murmuring is not against me. Hallelujah. It's not against the Malak, those that bring the message of Almighty Yahweh to you, but it's against Yahweh, it says here in Exodus, Shemal chapter 16, verse 8. Your murmurs are not against us, but against Almighty Yahweh. That's why murmurs are against. Or it might be towards that one. It might be to that one. But it's against Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. That's why we must be ever so careful what comes out of our Lashon, out of our mouth, Yisrael. What comes forth out of our feth, our mouths. And Moshe spake to Aharon, saying, To all the congregation of Yisrael, come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your murmurings. And it shall come to pass, as Aharon spoke to the whole congregation of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the splendor of Yahweh appeared in a cloud. Verse 11. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, he spoke unto Moshe, in verse 12, I have heard the murmurings. He heard the murmurings. We must be careful, Yisrael. Is it not an old saying or old cliche to be careful what you wish for? Or careful what you ask for? Because you just might get it. I have heard the murmurs of the children of Yisrael. He says to speak to them, saying, at evening you shall eat flesh. Did they not desire flesh? Did they say they'd rather be back at the flesh pots of Mizraim? Yahweh said, all right, you're murmuring. I'm going to try you about your words or what you have said or what you murmured about. And in the evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am Yahweh, your Almighty. And verse 13, and it came to pass that in the evening that the quails came up. Can you imagine that? Seeing that, Israel? The fowl of the air, the birds, the quail, they came up. And it, they covered the camp. So that wasn't one or two or a couple hundred quail. It said that they covered, they covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay around about the host of them. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. Verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna. Or in other words, what, what is this? What is this? For they wist not that it was. They didn't know what it was, so they, they named it manna. It's called manna. And Moshe said to them, this is the bread which Yahweh 
has given to you to eat. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, it is manna, for they wished not it was. And Moshe said, this is the bread that Yahweh has given to you to eat. Verse 16. This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Now, we've got to remember Yisrael, during this, this is a test. Yahweh said that he would prove Yisrael, even for their murmurings, to see if they will continue in his mishpah or not. Gather of it every man according to his eating, how much that the, a man needs, or the portion, and armor for every man according to the number of your persons, Take you every man for them which are in his tent. Was that not a commandment? It was commanded just to take what is needed for the time to each person or each soul, nephesh, that was in the tents, according to whether it be child, whether it be a man, or whatever that person can consume, you just take that amount. That was a Torah, that was a mishpah, Yisrael. Don't you know that Yahweh, he gives us Torah? That's what the Torah is for. That we don't go beyond the boundaries of the limits that Yahweh has given us, Almighty Yahweh. But we cannot abide in the Torah and the Word without the Ruach. We must have the Ruach, Yisrael. We must have the Ruach. Because the Torah, the Word alone, it, it, it kills. But by the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, by the understanding, understanding how he leads us in this hour, that's what brings forth life or bring the high of the understanding that we need Yisrael. Verse 17. And the children of Yisrael did so and gathered some more and some less, again, according to the person. And when they did measure it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, so they did not go over, and he that gathered little they did not lack. So they, they, they obeyed. They got that which that person needed for each one of the persons in that household. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moshe said, let no man leave it until morning. Notwithstanding, they hearken to Moshe. Did they hearken to Moshe? Is that what it says there? And Shemoth chapter 16, verse 6, verse 20. Notwithstanding, they hearken to Moshe. No. It says, notwithstanding, they hearken not. They hearken not. See, we are a nation, we are people that hearken not unto the Torah. Sure, this is, I'm reading about Israel, y'all, but this is speaking of, of us. We, we, we still do this. This is how we operate, Israel, y'all. Y'all would give us specific commandments. We father them out, but yet we, do, we still do not hearken. We still do not obey. We still do not do that which Yahweh commands us to do. He says, do not lie, and yet we lie. Well, I just, just fudge that a little bit. Just twist that a little bit. There's nothing wrong with a little white lie. No, it just is as devilish and deceiving as a black lie, or however you may quote it or say it, Israel. Yah. Notwithstanding, it says, they hearken not unto Moshe, but some of them left of it unto the morning, and it bred worms and stank. I, I recall my, my uh, grandmother, she would say stunk, stunken. They stank, and Moshe he was wroth. He was very angry. He was very upset with them. Verse 21. And they gathered it every morning according to his eating. In verse 21. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Israel. Simple instructions. All they had to do was obey. Again, Yahweh said he did this because to try, to prove them. He gave them what they asked for and what they needed, Israel. It even instructed them on what to do. And yet we still find those in the camp that do not hearken unto the Torah of the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. You listen or not, you're listening tonight to Shema Yisrael. 
I am Zarkan Yaramia sitting here live tonight with you all. Again, the phone number is 843-658-6222. Let's have another call tonight, Israel. Hallelujah. I'm going to proceed on to about an hour, hour and 30 minutes tonight to prepare ourselves for Shabbat, the teaching, Riyadh Yisrael, the worship before Almighty Yahweh, the singing, the dancing. Look forward to the Shabbat, this day of rest, Yisrael. Six days we have labored, and on this Shabbat, the seventh day, we shall rest. Hallelujah. We shall find rest in the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. Shemoth Exodus chapter 17. And I might even have a song to play somewhere in the middle of this Yisrael. Hallelujah. It says in chapter 17 of Shemoth, verse 1, And all the congregation of Yisrael, the children of Yisrael, journeyed from the wilderness of Sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of Yahweh, and pitched a tent in Rephidim. And there were no water for the people to drink. This is another account of murmuring Israel. Verse 2. Wherefore the people did chide with Moshe. They did murmur. And said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moshe said to them, Why chide you with me? Why complain you? Why murmur you with me? Wherefore... Do you tempt Yahweh? He's asking them, don't you know that you're tempting Yahweh? Do you want to tempt Almighty Yahweh? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moshe and said, Wherefore is this that you have brought us out of Mizraim to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moshe cried unto Yahweh, saying, What shall I do to this people? They be almost ready to slay or to stone me. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Go on before the people and take with you of the elders of Israel and your rod, wherewith you smote the river, take it in your hand and go. Behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite the rock, you shall hit the rock, and there shall come out water of it, out of it, that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Yisrael. So did Yahweh hear Yisrael when they murmur? Yes, he did. Did he act accordingly? Yes, he did, Yisrael. Don't you know that Yahweh, his eyes are upon his Sadiq, those he deems Sadiq, that he is aware and that he is mindful of us, Yisrael. When we pray, when we cry out unto him, he hears us, Yisrael. But one thing we must be careful of as a people is the spirit of murmuring, the spirit of chiding. We know that Yahweh, he is more than able to accomplish all things. Even that which is above remind me of the song, above our wildest dreams. Sure, Yahweh can accomplish it. But why doesn't he do it? Or why do we think, we ask, why doesn't he do it? Why don't you heal this and don't make this one complete? Why don't you increase my finances? Why don't you do this, Yahweh? Why can't you do that? It's not that he will not or cannot, Israel. Yah. We must understand that these are the trials for us. It is that we may be proven before Almighty Yahweh. We don't need to try Yahweh to see what he will do. But definitely we are the ones that need to try. Why? Because we're full of so much junk and so much filth of the world. Did you not hear the art talking about the Christmases? How they say we should worship, we should celebrate these Christmases and these Thanksgivings and these Easter eggs. It's all based on, on lies, Israel. It's all lies. There's no... Saint Nick or, or, or any of that folly. It, it's all folly, Israel. It's all folly. We should come out of those things. You should not be setting up a Christmas tree or setting presents under the Christmas trees or anything of that nature, Israel. It's not of Almighty Yahweh. It's not. It's against Yahweh. It's against Torah. 
If anything, we should set our affections and our thoughts upon the things that are above. It's up to how we put so much effort into doing what Yahweh commands us not to do. Yet when he commands us to do, as we've seen here, we disobey Israel. We should follow the Torah. No matter where it may lead us, we know that for a surety it's leading us in one direction. It's, remo it's leading us towards the Melkut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. So we must be a people that stand the test of the trials of life, the trials of circumstances, and believe and trust in Almighty Yahweh. That he is able not only to heal, that he is able not only to give us strength, but he is able to carry us through and move us on and to greater tests, so be his will, or even to the end of our life, Israel, to this life past. And we know that those that die in Yahshua HaMashiach, it's a beautiful thing because we pass from this life of the physical, but yet we're never separated from Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we're talking about murmuring Israel, Yah. Talk about murmuring tonight. Let's go to Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Still talking about the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. Because the people chide, or we murmur against Almighty Yahweh. You know, murmuring doesn't move you forward on anything, Israel. It, it really doesn't. It impedes. Murmuring enables. It causes you to slow down. It stops the process of that which go forth. You know, if we were to look that up, murmuring or complaining it, 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 or, or loom, that's what the definition of loom is. It is to settle. It's to abide. It's, it's to not move. So when we find ourselves murmuring, it keeps us from moving to the place that Yahweh intends for us to, to move to, or to the understanding that Yahweh intends us to understand, or even our immune not being strengthened by the trial. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And when the people complain, it doesn't say they complain, they murmur, they chide, it displeased Almighty Yahweh, and Yahweh, he heard it. Did it say it heard it there, Yisrael Yah? Am I reading out of the same Torah that you have? Did it say that Yahweh, he heard, he heard the murmuring and the complaining? And it says that his anger, his anger, his hot, displeasing anger, it was kindled. And the fire, the ish of Almighty Yahweh burned among them and consumed them that are in the uttermost parts of the camp. Is that what we want, Israel? Do we want Yahweh to consume us in the trial, in the tribulation, in the test, because of our murmuring and our complaining? We don't want to be consumed by Almighty Yahweh. We don't want to fall into to the hands of our Abba when he's angry. It said that it was consumed, it was burnt, by the ish or by the fire in the othermost parts of the camp. And the people, they cried unto Moshe. And when Moshe, when he pulled when he prayed unto Yahweh, it said the fire was quenched. Don't you know Yahweh, he sends fire when we, when we, you ever been in the trial? Or even when you murmur, when you're in an argument, you're ish, you're ish, you're. We, you, you experience that as being a married couple. You even experience that with your ock, with your brothers. I know in the house that I come out of, when we have arguments or heated arguments, when you would complain or when you fuss and fight, it just got worse. It didn't get any better, Yisrael. Yeah. So murmuring, it, murmuring doesn't move you forward. It makes things worse. It makes things more intense. It makes things harder to bear. And it even invokes the anger of Almighty Yahweh as we read in Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And the fire went among the camps about those, and they were consumed. Verse 3. And he called the name of the place Taborah, because the fire of the ish of Almighty Yahweh did burn among them. Is that what we want the judgment of Yahweh to burn? Sure, we want the judgment of Yahweh to burn out 
the dross, and that's what this was doing amongst the house of Israel. This was showing a cleansing amongst the nation of Israel. Those that would not walk after the Torah, those that murmured, those that complained, Yahweh removed them, Israel. Is that what we want Yahweh to do with us? We want him to, we want him to remove those things that are within us by the, 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 the Torah and by the Ruach HaKodesh, that the impurities be burned out of our left, but we don't want to be consumed that we are destroyed by the hot displeasure of Almighty Yahweh, that we cease from walking, hallelujah, in his presence. Verse 4. And it says, And the mixed multitude now that was among them fell a lusting. Did we not talk about the lusting or the lust of the flesh earlier, Yisrael? And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Don't you see how they're murmuring, Israel? Who should give us flesh? Don't we know that Yahweh, he provides everything that we need? All that we need is in Yahshua, Hamashiach. He satisfies. Joy, he supplies. Life will be worthless without having Yahshua HaMashiach. But they cried again, who shall give us flesh? Verse 5. And again, their minds went back to Mizraim. We remember the fish that we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons, the leek, and the onions and the garlic. But now our souls are dried away. Did it say their nephesh? Or did they say their bodies? Or did they say their flesh is wasting away? No, it's talking about the nephesh. It's talking about the Ruach Yisrael. That's what it's talking about. Do we find our souls being wasted, being parsh, being dried up, Yisrael? You know, the famine, there's a famine out in the land, and it's not for the eating of bread. But it is for the hearing, it is for the preaching, the exaltation of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So we find ourselves lacking, then we find ourselves wondering about, mid, wondering about uh, Mizraim or Egypt or our past, the things that we experienced in our past life. But they're saying here, not that their bodies are wasting away, but their nephesh or their soul on an innermost man. Now our soul, our nephesh, is dried away, and there is nothing at all. What do we have today, Israel? All we have to do is ask, and it shall be given, seek, and you shall find not, and the door shall be open unto them. Not this prosperity trash, but we ought to know, as a people of Yah, walking in his Mishra and his Torah, being led by the Ruah, what Yahweh desires. And upon that, we should ask. And if we do that, Yisrael, there is nothing that he will withhold from us. Imuna, didn't um, Solomon, did he pray for more wisdom, more understanding, that he might know how to go before and from the people of Almighty Yahweh? Th those are the kind of things that we seek after. We don't seek after wisdom, after, after the, the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh being filled with more imuna, But we find ourselves wanting and asking things that please the flesh, things that we want, things that we desire. Oh, we want Yahweh to do this. Well, we say we want Yahweh to do that for us, but what about the other one? Do we desire that same thing for the other one? Or are we selfish? Are we withholding the blessing from the other eye or the other one? Yisrael, yeah. Hallelujah. But it said that their soul, they said that their souls is dried away in verse 6 of chapter 11 of Numbers, mid, the mid bar. And there is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So were they tired of the manna, of the bread that Yahweh was giving them to eat Israel? And the manna. And the manner was as corindar seed. And the color thereof are the color of Belim. 
And the people went about and gathered it. And the ground, and they ground and milled it, Israel, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in the pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Verse 10. And Moshe heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly. Moshe also was displeased. And Moshe said to Yahweh, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? See, even he was being overwhelmed with the, the type of responsibility that was given to him. Because this is, we're a hard, hard neck people. We're stubborn people, Yisrael. Whether you want to come to grasp with that or not, this is us. This is where we are in this time and age, Yisrael. Nothing has changed. Are you not Yisrael? Is this not talking about Yisrael? And Moshe said to Yahweh, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in your sight? That you will lay the burden of all this upon me. Listen to Moshe. He said, I have conceived. Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom. As a nourishing father bears a suckling child. To the land which you swore to your fathers. This is Moshe asking Almighty Yahweh. Which should I have flesh to give to all this people? For they weep to me saying, give us flesh that we may eat. What are you weeping? What are you crying? What are you complaining about unto Almighty Yahweh? He said, I'm not able to bear all of this, all this people alone because it's too heavy for me. And if you deal thus with me, he says, kill me, I pray you, out of the hand. If I have found favor in your sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. Don't you see what Moshe was going through? The stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-hearted people. That we are Yisrael. That we chide, that we murmur against Almighty Yahweh. And we know that it displeases Almighty Yahweh, that it causes his fire, his itch to kindle. Amongst Israel. And you can see that the pressure, how it's wearing even on Moshe. Verse 16. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Gather to me 70 men, elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and the officers over them, and bring them to the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with you. And I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take of the root up which is upon you, and I will put it upon them, that they may bear the burden of the people with you, that you bear it not yourself alone. Verse 18. And say you to the people, purify yourselves for tomorrow against tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh. For you have wept. In the ears of Yahweh saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, Yahweh will give you flesh and you shall eat. Again, you listen to Shema Yisrael tonight, Yisrael. Um, I am Zakeng Yerami. I'm sitting here live for you that are just tuning in. And what we're doing, we, um, we're um, basically going over the message that I have begun concerning the shaking of the wilderness and how Yahweh time after time through Torah and Midbar and Numbers and even in Exodus. The trials that the children of Israel went to, with Yahweh, he used the term um, prove, to prove or to try or to test throughout this whole time, Israel. And what we're dealing with tonight and what we may deal with even on the next broadcast when I sit here with you all, um, it's concerning the spirit of murmuring. How we shouldn't murmur before Almighty Yahweh. We have the Ruach HaKodesh, do we not, Yisrael? 
and we have the Torah, that we should understand what Yahweh is doing in our lives, in our daily lives, when we're being tried, when we're afflicted, when our nephesh, when our ruach, when our imuna, our faith, is being tried, Yisrael, is to prove us. Not to prove Yah, but it is to prove us. Why? Just as it stated in Torah, what I just read, to see if we will do all that Yahweh has commanded us to do. And it is a trial, Yisrael. But Yahweh said that he would not put more on us than we could bear. That the yoke is easy and the burden of is light, Yisrael. But yet we cannot walk in sin. We cannot walk in transgression. We cannot walk contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And we certainly can't walk under this spirit of murmuring and expect everything to glide smoothly. We must obey Yahweh. And then Yahweh says, if we will obey him, walk in his ministry, right, his commandments, then he will brought us. He will not cause these afflictions as we saw in Mizraim to happen upon us or these diseases to happen upon us, Israel. That's why there's so much happening in our bodies. There's so much happening in the house, in the assembly of Israel. It's because we're simply doing, as I am reading here, we simply are not walking in the Torah as Yahweh has commanded us to walk. And sure, this is our example, which is written, but this is a truth. This is a true saying even unto this day, Yisrael. And yet, even after all Yahweh has given us, yet we still find ourselves murmuring before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me play a song in this part of the broadcast, Yisrael. I am going to bring this to a close tonight. And again, you're welcome to call in tonight. The phone number is 843 658 6222. And I know there are those of you that are out there, you have called in before. Faithful listeners, faithful supporters, we do Barack you all, Ak Micaiah, His Ishaw, the family there. There's just so much. There's so many of you out there. I do not uh, recall you all by name, but you all are Yisrael. Of a surety, Yahweh knows who you are. So we do Barack you for your support, for listening tonight. And let us be in prayer. Let us be in prayer for the house of Yisrael. And, 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 and for our children also, Yisrael, we need to understand that our children are those that should carry uh, the Torah of Yahweh forward. As the Zarkane, as they become old and, and weary and they pass from this life, we know there is a surety that we should cease from this life, Yisrael. We must train our children. We must allow them to see that the excitement and the joy, even in trials, that they may understand, Yisrael, that they may know and even understand by watching your example before them. Let us, not, let us not be ignorant. Don't think that our children, they watch everything. I've got two little girls. And believe me, they watch. When you think they're not looking, they're looking. And they're calculating. They're putting, as my wife would say, my Isha, they're putting two and two together. That they may understand the process and the understanding of things is right, y'all. And it's important that we teach our bang, our children. Hallelujah. It's important that we teach our children. Let me play a song for us, Yisrael. Can't go around the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. And um, after this tonight, uh, we're not getting any more calls. I can see. Hallelujah. Um, I may go ahead and bring this to a close tonight that we may prepare for Shabbat, uh, Shabbat services. Hallelujah.
Cannot go around the Torah of Yah. Cannot go around the Mishra, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Again, I am Zakin Yaram Yah, sitting here live tonight. I am bringing the broadcast to a close. We do thank you all for listening. We do thank you for the call that we had, my Ark. And again, our prayers are with you, your Isha. Um, and, and, and throughout all Yisrael Yah. For we, we need to pray for one another, Yisrael Yah. That we would, more than anything, Stand for the Torah. Stand on the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. We know if we're not careful and if we're not keeping our feet or making sure our feet are planted on the sure foundation, Yahshua HaMashiach, then any kind of wind of doctrine or any kind of, of, of wave can come in and just wash us off of our feet, Israel. So we must be stable. We must have imuna. Faith in who we believe in. We believe in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Um, I did leave off in the midbar. Let me just start here and read just a, a few more verses. Right? There's a point I want to get to before I end the broadcast tonight. Just a few more scriptures. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me read... Um, I stopped in verse 18 of Numbers chapter 11. So let me read um, to verse, verse 23. And then I will continue on our next broadcast concerning murmuring Israel. You recall me making a statement, we must be careful what we murmur, what we ask for, what we chide Israel. There's a statement that, that I've heard before, so you be careful what you ask for because you might, you might just get it. And then if you get it, then you will wish it had never happened, Yisrael. So um, here in verse 18, uh, chapter 11 of Numbers. And say you to the people to prepare them or purify yourselves, make yourselves ready for tomorrow. And you shall eat flesh. Did they not cry out for flesh? They had the manna. They didn't know what it was. But the, the taste of it was sweet, it was wonderful, but yet they still wanted the flesh. That was not enough what Yahweh provided for them. Do we not think Yahweh, he provides what they need, what we need, Yisrael? But yet we still have want. I want this. Well, I know I got that, but I want this. Or I want that. I know Yahweh's doing this, but I want Yahweh to do that, Yisrael. We say that. So he said, give them flesh to eat, for you have wept. In the ears of Almighty Yahweh, saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? And like I said, that's, a, that's murmuring. Saying that Yahweh cannot provide. Even saying all that Yahweh has done for us, all that Yahweh did, the works he done in Mizraim unto Pharaoh and his house, and brought them out. And even Pharaoh's army been destroyed in the Red Sea. Don't you know, there are things in our lives that have been destroyed in the Red Sea, Israel, that does not pursue us anymore. But yet we soon forget what Yahweh has done for us, Yisrael. Who shall give us flesh to eat in verse 18? For it was well with us in Mizraim, wherefore Yahweh will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Verse 19. You shall not eat it for one day, listen to this now, nor for two days, nor for five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days. He says here in verse 20, but even the whole month until it come out of your nostrils. Didn't they cry for meat? Didn't they cry for flesh? And it shall be loathsome to you 
because you have displeased Yahweh, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Mizraim? And Moshe said, The people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen, and you have said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat the whole month. Verse 22. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And Yahweh said unto Moshe, is Yahweh's hand whacked short? Don't you see how Moshe wondering how Yahweh is going to provide this for all of the people? And Yahweh said unto Moshe, is Yahweh's hand whacked short? You shall see now, whether my word shall come to pass or not. Why do we not understand that Yahweh's word will he speak and shall come to pass, Israel? For it shall come to pass. Verse 24, and this is where I said I would close tonight. And Moshe went out and told the people the word of Yahweh and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And I'm going to stop there for tonight, Yisrael, y'all, and we'll pick it up in chapter 11 again on next Shema Yisrael, y'all, or even maybe on uh, the next Cut May Emit. But we must understand, even from what I've been teaching tonight, preaching, whatever you want to call it tonight, Yisrael, y'all, it's important that we not murmur, but that we be a, a people that is understanding what Yahweh is doing in this hour. Not complaining about our present situations or our circumstances because it is Yahweh trying us. If you recall me talking about the fire of the Ish of Almighty Yahweh, for silver to be pure silver, it has to be tried. It must be tried. And it has to be tried by one of the most ruthless forces there is, if I may say in nature or in the hands of Almighty Yahweh. And that is the fire. Why? Because it consumes. But the fire will only consume the dross. But yet the metal, whatever it is, silver, steel, gold, whatever you want to name, the purities for it to be to the utmost perfection has to be purged out. And truly, we need the purging of Almighty Yahweh in this hour. So before I close tonight, let us close with prayer. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do toll at you for all that you have done. Almighty Yahweh, for you have done so much for us. If we would just individually look back on our lives, Yahweh, even as I look back on my life, Yahweh, I see how far you have brought me, Yah. And I know it's only been by your hand. It's only been by your hand that we as Israel, Yah, those that are scattered abroad, those that are listening to the broadcast tonight, those that do not have the ability to listen, Yahweh, still yet, the word tonight was for them, and this prayer tonight is for them. That you will continually purify us, Yahweh, by your Torah. Not by your hot displeasure, Almighty Yahweh. We know that we as a people, we must be a people that is understanding. And we must shema, we must hear to understand what you are doing in this hour. In our present circumstances, Yahweh, and everyone, I, I do pray that you would strengthen them, Yahweh. That you would give them the wherewithal, the fortitude, Yahweh, to know. That what you have spoken, Abba Yahweh, you shall bring it to pass. And that you have not left them, Almighty Yahweh. I know a lot of times we feel left, that the presence of Yahweh is not near us. But Yahweh, you said that your eyes are upon your chosen vessels, your elect, your conditions, Abba Yahweh. So we do barak you tonight, Yahweh, for all things. No matter what, we barak you for the pains. We barak you for the heartache, Abba Yahweh. We barak you for all things, Yahweh, not for some things, but you command us to give you toda in all things. If we could barak you in all things, Abba Yahweh, we would find the strength that we need to press on, Yahweh. Whether it means moving, moving, losing a loved one. I have lost loved ones here at Teshua in the family, Yahweh. There have been those that have gone on. And yet, even in that, Yahweh, you have strengthened my love. You have strengthened my resolve. You have strengthened those, Yahweh, that understand and that see what you are doing in this last hour. So I pray, Abba Yahweh, for all the house of Israel, Yahweh, you would give them strength, that they would be encouraged, and that you will pour out your Ruach HaKodesh. 
and that you will give Yahweh your people shalom and rest on this beautiful Shabbat. In all things, we do barak you. We give you todah for all things, Yahweh. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. I pray this broadcast has been an inspiration unto your left tonight, Yisrael Yah. That more than anything, I want to strengthen you and encourage you to press on. That we not murmur. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Yahweh, he will, he has done everything that he said he would do. And the work which he has started even in you, in your life, he shall finish it. And he has an expected end for us, Israel. What is that? It's the Melku. It's his kingdom. Hallelujah. It's his kingdom. It's not this, this stuff that's on this old world, what we see around this y'all Israel y'all that's not the treasure that Yahweh is talking about but it's the things that has not been made by man's hands neither has been touched by man because everything that man put his hands upon it seems to be corrupt and it corrupts Israel y'all but that which Yahweh builds it's not corrupt and it's those things that he has in store for us so let us press on and let, like my avat would say to see what the end shall be Yahweh Barak you all Yisrael Shalom Hallelujah.